Hello and welcome today. I know many of you out there are um, mystified and captivated by Adobe products and feel that maybe that there's a very high learning curve and that they're very difficult to use. <clears throat> All of that is true. What I'd like to do today is kind of show you a little bit around uh, Adobe's Dreamweaver, which is part of the Creative Suite. It's a very, very good program to use. And I'm going to be using a Mac today, but the same principles are going to apply to a PC. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and open the program. Now on the Mac, you can do that one of several ways. You can open the launch pad, and then you can find it in the launch pad. And this looks very similar to what you would see like on an iPad or an iPhone. So I have all of my stuff in the Adobe CS 5.5 folder and you can come and you can just click on it right there. I also have a shortcut saved to my dock. So I'm going to go ahead and open it that way. <clears throat> and we'll wait for that to open on up. Okay, so I get this uh, error message a lot. We're just going to kind of ignore that. I'm going to hit update and the program will open up. and you always have to type your password in again when it has something like that happen. Normally you shouldn't be having that happen, but if it ever does, it's not a big deal. Don't freak out about it. Okay, so once you get your Dreamweaver up, you will see that I've been in here before. Now Dreamweaver, what it does is it assists you in creating dynamic web pages for your websites. You can write in a number of different scripts including XHTML, PHP, CSS, even ASP and XML. Now the one thing that you notice along the side here, it has local files and it, you can also set that to remote server and it will connect to my remote server and show you the files that are on the server does take a little bit of time sometimes unfortunately and we can go ahead and hide that too. Um, another thing that you see there's my remote server right there. So another thing that you can really do with this the first thing that you probably need to do is go ahead and set up your sites and you do that uh, by going to manage sites and I have one site set up I'm gonna go ahead and, and walk you through a, a set um, a second site real quick so we can get started with coding. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and edit this one. I'll just kind of show you around that. So you have your site name and then you can name that whatever you want to. You also have your site folder. This is a local folder on your computer's hard drive where it accesses local copies of the folder and local copies of the files. Everything that's on your website should be duplicated on your hard drive as well. And Dreamweaver does a great job of keeping them synced up. You can change that by clicking the little folder icon here and you can search around your computer and find the folder where you want. Another thing that you can come up to, uh, we we'll pull down the advanced settings. We can look at all of these things. Default images folder, site-wide media query file. We have a lot of different uh, options that we can choose here. I'm not going to get into many of those because this is a very beginner oriented uh, screencast. So you, the other thing that you want to look at is your servers. I have one server here. It's a remote server. I have it set up um, with my name. I can choose whatever I want that. It's a FTP server file transfer protocol and then I have my FTP address which is just simply for my host is commonati.net. For our EdTech servers I believe it's edtech2.boisestate.edu you have to put in your username and your password when you're once you're done you also want to put in your root directory as well as your website URL now once you have all of that information in there you're going to want to hit test and just make sure that everything is going correctly see my Dreamweaver connected successfully to my web server it means I have all of my options in there now we also want to make sure usually that we have passive FTP checked and performance optimization. It really does help things out quite a bit. I'm just going to choose cancel right here just because I haven't made any changes, but you can go ahead and hit save if you've made changes. Once you get that done, we can add other servers if we want to. We can add a testing server if we want. Some people 
uh, deploy on a testing server before they go live to the website. I don't have that set up. I just have the one computer. All of my testing is done live. Maybe that's not the best practice, but unfortunately that's the way I have to do it. So I'm going to hit cancel there too rather than save because I didn't actually make any changes. And then I'm going to be done here. Now, I just want this is what you're going to see when you first open it up. If you've never used it before, you'll get the Dreamweaver welcome screen. It shows you a bunch of things. For example, uh, recent items that you've opened gives you the option to open one, gives you the option to create new stuff, as well as some uh, tutorial videos over here. I am going to go ahead and just choose to open a file. Now, I can go from the recent, I can choose open, it'll bring up a dialog box here or I can come from the list of local files and open up what I want here and you'll see that I've been in here quite a bit I use this software every day this is my uh, learning log and things like that so basically what we can do here is we can edit just about any type of file I'm gonna go ahead and edit something that's fairly simple we're gonna edit the uh, index PHP file here and this is the index to my whole site so if I open that up, you'll notice a couple of things here. It says dynamically related files cannot be discovered because a testing server is not defined. Like I said, I don't have a testing server, so I don't worry about that error message. But you'll notice that these are color-coded lines of code here. You have all the blue here, which is things in uh, quotation marks. You have the dark blue, which is the actual HTML tags. You have red, which is PHP coding and then you also have green which is specific functions within PHP you have light gray which is HTML comments you have pink which is associated with style sheets and then you have black which is actual text text that's displayed on the page so um, I'm not going to go into too much in detail about HTML coding if you don't know it this is not the tutorial for you but basically you have your code window here you can have it split towards code and what you see is what you get now my page isn't going to display correctly here because I am using dynamic PHP files and include files to construct and keep my site under one cohesive theme and make it easier for me to change things without having to change numerous different pages so you can also just go straight into design view and do whatever you want uh, that way another thing that you can use here is live code which in this case uh, I have server side code which is the PHP so I need a testing server um, I'm not going to do this so it's, it's going to tell me that I need to preview using the local source instead I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes it's going to go ahead and do its thing. It's basically going to give me the same thing that we just saw. But the thing with live code is it uh, moves your cursor based on where you move on the design page. It moves into the same place where the coding is. It's a debugging tool and it does kind of help uh, inspect and find errors and bugs. You can also use inspect which will highlight based on where your cursor is. Highlight the part in the code that you need to be at. It's very, very handy for highlighting bugs and matching code with what you're seeing on the screen. Now we can turn live code off. We can turn live view off. Live view is very handy. It'll, it actually shows you the live view of what your code looks like. Again, with my site, it doesn't work that well because of the way I have it coded with the PHP and no testing server. So that was today's lesson. Um, I just kind of wanted to show you around. Dreamweaver uh, so that you don't get so scared of it. You'll notice up here that it does list all associated files that are listed in my index.php. Each one of these files does something separate and has included code in it. Now we can go look at those files. I include them all in, the, in an includes folder here and it's, it's very very handy here. So we're going to look at head htm and what that does is it gives me a bunch of head information that I would put at the beginning and it happens to be all uh, PHP code and it has to do with uh, detecting what type of browser is being used it doesn't really matter what type of code you put in there you can put whatever you want in if you're using an include file now oh, that's my bad sorry now you can also notice along the top here it lists all open files which is a very handy procedure now let's say um, 
I want to I'm going to go back to code view. Let's say I've made some changes to this index PHP and I want to upload them to my server. So what I basically do is I make sure I come up here to file and then save, save all usually. That way I save all of the files that are being worked on and that way I don't have any problems. But then I'm going to go ahead and find index PHP and quite simply I may not be connected to my server but once I hit this little upload button or put button it connects for me. I get the little dialog box and it connects to my server. It does take just a minute. Sometimes you get this information if you haven't done this in a while. I am going to choose yes and tell it that I want to put my copy of the file on the server. So and then it will it will write the file and it's there. And then you can go test it, which we can do right here. And this is my site. Currently under construction because I'm not quite sure what to put on the front page. I do run my learning log off of this on a, on a different subdomain, which is all maintained within Dreamweaver. Now you'll notice Dreamweaver, this this is my site, and it doesn't look that complicated, but if you'll notice EdTech here, it has a whole bunch of other folders, and uh, the L log, this one is huge. It has tons of files in it, and these are only local files. The actual website has a lot more. But Dreamweaver is a great, great place to where you can organize your information so that you can see everything and that you can keep organizing, make sure everything's in sync and where it needs to be. So if you have any questions, my email address is fabiocominati at u.boisestate.edu. And if there's nothing else, you guys have a great day.